This is Masrawi, 26 years old and one of the most underrated fullbacks in the world over the past five seasons, now being linked with a move to Manchester United. So how good is he? Should United sign him? And what would he bring to the club? Masrawi is a fullback that possesses incredible levels of technical security. You can put him into almost any situation on the pitch and he will come out of that situation with the ball at his feet. Part of this is because of his brilliant first touch. Even when under pressure, Masrawi is a composed individual. He wants the ball at his feet and it's obvious to see why. He is clearly a technically gifted player. But not only can he take a safe touch to keep the ball for his side, he can also be more ambitious than that as well. Even when under pressure, he has the ability to turn out a 180 degree turn to move the ball forward for his side. He's also brilliant at passing under pressure as well. Part of this comes because he is a two-footed player, which doubles his options on the ball. When you are a right-footed player, you tend to play to the right-hand side. When you are a left-footed player, you tend to play towards the left. When you can use both feet, you double your passing angles, making Masrawi a brilliant player in the first phase. Masrawi's technical security on the ball also extends further to being a brilliant dribbler but also a brilliant ball carrier. Now what Masrawi tends to do is wait for an opponent to come towards him before quickly accelerating over the first few yards, catching his opponent off guard, allowing him to progress forward with the ball. But not only that, Masrawi also has a surprising bag of tricks for a fullback, able to get himself out of some pretty tricky situations with a little bit of skill, it may be a step over or a roulette, in a tight space to move himself and the ball past the opponent. On top of this, Masrawi also loves a little drop of the shoulder as well. So again, as the opposition defender gets close to him, he will drop the shoulder and then either carry the ball outside down the line or inside into the centre of the pitch. And once again, it's his ability to go both ways that makes him such a difficult player to try and stop. He really is one of the best, the very best, ball-carrying, dribbling fullbacks on the market. Masrawi King in the 93rd percentile for pass completion rate for short passes over the past year but also he ranks in the 94th percentile for medium range passes completed and the 93rd percentile for his pass completion range with long range passes. This is clearly someone who has every single pass in his locker, but he's not just a safe. Masrawi also has a couple of nice habits on the ball as well. One will be shaping up as though he is going to play the ball down the line, but quite nicely with someone like Xerxes coming in at Manchester United, that is a dynamic that we could see. But Masrawi could also have a good link up with Rasmus Hoyland as well, because not only can Masrawi play into the chest, he can also clip a ball over the top for a striker or a winger to run onto. Masrawi really could bring a different progressive dynamic to this Manchester United side from a relatively deep position. As well as moving the ball forward to try and get his teammates into better positions, Masrawi also loves to get into high positions himself as well. He loves to attack the final third. This is an incredibly attacking fullback. But the way that he does this movement is probably the most interesting thing, because once again, Masrawi is incredibly versatile. In one instance, he is more than happy to overlap down the right-hand side. As the winger moves inside, Masrawi will time his movement to arrive into space, before then potentially looking to put a ball into the box. But Masrawi also switches things up as well. For example, in the same game just a few minutes later, you will often see the winger playing much wider and Masrawi is actually going to find himself in a half space and this is arguably where his movement is at its best, underlapping into the final third, attacking the penalty area from where he is a genuine goal threat. Particularly during his time with Ajax, he would often find the back of the net from these tucked in positions and that would be an interesting dynamic at Manchester United. Particularly if someone like Ahmad was to start on the right wing this season, Ahmad's ability to go both ways would couple quite nicely with Masrawi's ability to do something very similar. What all of this shows is that Masrawi is a top ball playing defender. For me, again, when it comes to fullbacks, one of the very top, top ball playing fullbacks in the world. He can do a little bit of everything. He can play under pressure in the first phase. He can play higher up the pitch. He can overlap into the final third. He can underlap into the final third. And this is all because he is technically so good on the ball. And that offers great tactical versatility and flexibility. You see, Masrawi, because he can do anything on the ball, can almost play any position you want as well. For example, he has made his name typically as a right back, but he has also played in a wing back role as well, at right wing back, but also at left wing back. And that also takes us on to the point that he could play left back for Manchester United if needed. In terms of tactically what he wants to do on the pitch, there is a few different ways he could operate. In one instance, he could drop into a back three, 
allowing Manchester United to build with a back three on the first line. However, Masraoui isn't restricted to just that. He could also invert into midfield, allowing United still to play with a back three if Luke Shaw drops deep at left back, but Masraoui could go into midfield to make up the extra numbers, something we saw Diogo Dallo doing to great effect last season. Again though, Masraoui isn't restricted to just this. He can also offer incredible attacking output in the final third. We've seen already that this is a man that wants to push forward, whether that be the overlap or the underlap, the flexibility that Masraoui would bring to this side would genuinely be special, and actually quite reminiscent of a certain player already at the club, Diogo Dallo. Diogo Dallo over the last couple of seasons under Eric Ten Hag's leadership has had a few different roles. We have seen him at times tucking into a back three, we have seen him inverting into midfield, we have seen him overlapping into the final third, and we have also seen spells where he has been required to underlap. If Masraoui was to be signed, we would then have two right backs that could play in this sort of way. And that is exactly what Eric Ten Hag wants from his defenders. He wants to be able to bring certain players out of the side, bring a new player in, but keep the same skill set. Currently, Manchester United cannot do this with Aaron Wambasaka. Wambasaka is, of course, a top player, and he can do a lot of very good things, particularly from a defensive point of view in one versus one situations. We know he's one of the best. But in terms of replicating a similar sort of role to what Dallo can do on the ball, Wambasaka is just simply nowhere near. So when he comes into the side, perhaps with Dallo injured, Manchester United completely have to change their tactical approach. Masraoui gets rid of that problem. With Masraoui and Dallo, you have two fullbacks with very similar skill sets on the ball, allowing you to chop and change while still keeping a similar tactical identity to this team. And that is what Eric Ten Hag needs to work on developing this season a tactical identity. Having two fullbacks that can play very similar roles is exactly what Manchester United need in order to do that. So, how good is Masraoui? For me, one of the very best ball-playing fullbacks in the world. Defensively, question marks. I think he is underrated in this department with his work off the ball, but by no means is he an elite one versus one defender. He definitely needs work in this area, and perhaps aerially he could have question marks over his name as well, playing in a physical league like the Premier League. However, that isn't the biggest problem here. The biggest problem is Masraoui's injury record. We can see just how many games he has missed through injury over the past few seasons. Even just in the last 12 months, he has regularly been sidelined. And this would be a problem for Manchester United. United already have a fullback crisis, with the unreliability of someone like Luke Shaw, but also Tyrell Malashia. Adding another injury-prone fullback to the equation may not be a good idea for Manchester United. So, should United sign Masraoui? It all depends on one thing. Can he stay fit? If he can stay fit, this is the perfect fullback for everything that Eric Ten Hag wants. There's a reason the two of them worked so well together at Ajax, because they are the perfect dynamic. Ten Hag loves using his fullbacks in various different roles, and Masraoui loves playing in that way. So if he can stay fit, he's perfect. He is perfect competition for Dallo, and at times arguably even an upgrade, but it is a big if. If Manchester United were to sign Masraoui and he was to be injury prone, then it would be more money thrown down the drain without really solving any of our squad problems. The silver lining perhaps on that front is that Masraoui would probably cost less than 20 million euros. It is quite an affordable deal, so Manchester United could be tempted to gamble. They could be tempted to take that risk with Masraoui because if he did sign, he did stay fit and he did play regularly, you would have yourself a top, top fullback. Those are my thoughts on Masraoui. Let me know yours in the comments down below. But apart from that, we are finished. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.